I made out with so many women tonight. Guys, I really like whippets. Is that your mom, bro? Looks like you have one long boob. It's oh, uniboob. This is my sexy bra. Looks like you wrapped an ace bandage around yeah, yourself I like three times. Touch it. It's like an eye mask. Like this? you put it in the fridge. You got a very boys don't no cry boy. thing happening right now. <laughs> Hello and welcome to Frame by Frame, your newest weekly film and TV review show, hosted by us. I'm Jim. And I'm Nick. And this week we're talking bad mums. So Mila Kunis plays a mum exhausted, stressed and fed up with all the pressures that come with being a mum. So she teams up with two other stressed out mums and they leave society's conventions behind. I'm going to try to do everything by myself today, which should be fine as long as everybody does what they're supposed to do, right? Oh, no. You got four minutes to get Roscoe to the vet, so I love you kids. Get out, get out. Emergency PTA meeting today at 5 o'clock. Will we see you there? I'll totally get a sitter on a Tuesday night. Yes, yeah, you no can. Problem. You actually can. What do I have on the schedule today? You're super late for your marketing meeting. You have to tell me these things! I can't believe I'm going to be late for my first soccer practice. I'm sorry, okay? I'm trying. Well, try harder, dude! The bake sale. No BPA, no MSG, no BHA, no BHT, no sesame, no soy, and of course, no nuts or eggs or milk or butter or salt or sugar or wheat. No. What's that now? I'm so tired of trying to be this perfect mom. I'm done. Yes, I do the cooking. Yes, I do the cleaning. Plus, I keep the nana real sweet for you eat. We have to bring down the perfect moms. Are those store-bought donut holes, maybe? Um, I am going to destroy it. So Nick, this is billed as from the writers of The Hangover and sometimes when you're watching it, it is kind of a, a female version of The Hangover, isn't it? It's definitely a female version of something. I mean, I've seen it most recently this past weekend and being the only guy in the cinema amongst a group of, uh, I'm going to assume like sort of mid-30s women, it was very evident that the humour was sort of skewed towards them. So there was a lot of, you know, when Jay Hernandez, who plays one of the, uh, a single father in the film, he, when he takes his shirt off, definitely the you know, got a big woo from the crowd there. But in a lot of the humour is, I guess, um, that witty, very blunt humour, but more skewed towards the female audience. So with The Hangover obviously played off the vulgarity of the humour, um, do you think that works here with the female cast? I think it does, and I think by having a, a large female cast, and obviously some of the, you know, the big names in Hollywood in terms of comedy, so you've got Christina Applegate, obviously Mila Kunis has been sort of, you know, skewing her career that way over the last couple of years with a lot of, you know, um, big films that way. But I think with the big female cast, the vulgarity, the, and because of obviously the demographic being women, it's a bunch of women just laughing about stuff that they'd probably feel otherwise uncomfortable in front of that male crowd. Especially with like your hangover type comedy, it is definitely sort of aimed directly at that sort of 18 to 35 male demographic, which this sort of sticks away from. So Nick, even though we weren't the target audience per se, um, obviously the mostly women in my screening as well, I still found it funny for the most part, especially the first half, quite funny. Yeah, look, couldn't agree more. I definitely think that's a big credit to the writers of the film, as we said, previous writers of The Hangover, so we're talking John Lucas, Scott Moore, and obviously that humour is evident, and it doesn't matter exactly what demographic they're aiming their films towards. Funny's funny at the end of the day, so it doesn't necessarily matter which, uh, you know, which group you sort of side with. Yeah, I agree. Um, there's obviously a message in the film um, yeah. of gender roles, empowerment, things like that. Mm -hmm. um, the first half it was the funner half where they're more um, you know, hedonistic, they're just letting loose doing what they do. Yeah. And as the second half wore on, did you find that the, the message was getting a bit strong? Definitely was. I definitely think that, especially coming from, I guess, that traditional mindset of the family where, you know, uh, back in the day, mum was at home doing this, she was the one doing all the jobs. And they paint that almost in that ironic sense where it's very clear from the get-go that that's not the way that a mum has to live. And I think that's very evident in terms of Kristen Bell's character there where she's being painted as that mum that's you know, got that overbearing husband and he's saying like, you need to get home, you need to look after the kids. And I think taking, um, you know, taking the crap out of that, taking the shit out of that, is yeah. um, poking fun and able to sort of make it very clear that's not the way things are going nowadays. Yeah. So it does hit yeah. home that message of, you know, um, antiquated gender roles and whatnot. Yeah. And again, seeing it through the role, seeing it through the eyes of my own mum, I was definitely sort of, I mean, definitely hit home. It was like, we do take our mums for granted a little bit. Yeah, well, that's good. It's worked for you. First thing, um, that, I, first thing that I did when I went home was like, thanks, mum, because she'd just done my ironing. And it's like something that she'd do most of the time, but 
it's one of those things that I don't think to say, oh, she does a million and one other things for us as well. Yeah, yeah. And the moment um, in, the fo- in the closing credits where the actresses are actually talking with their mums is actually one of the best bits of the movie, I thought. Oh, yeah. Definitely that talking head set up where each of them had them having a bit of a chat, talking about some of the key moments in the childhood, this and that, just sort of lets it uh, hit home that everyone has their mum and everyone has, um, you know, can relate to that in some degree, which I think is why, again, not part of that key demographic, but why, obviously, it was so relatable for us at the very least. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, relatable with all the themes. Certainly wasn't a subtle film, you know. There wasn't a very nuanced take on uh, gender issues. It was No, it was very... The, the examples were very extreme. Everyone was, like, you know, turned up to 11. It was very point blank. And I guess yeah. it's definitely that style, of that hangover type writing there, to the point, and um, there's no getting around it. But, you know, yeah. have you laugh all the time anyway. Yeah, and the cast, I thought, was fantastic. Kristen Bell, particularly, was quite funny. And Catherine Hahn, we've seen her do this kind of outrageous comedy before, and I think she suits it perfectly. Mm-hmm. I quite like the side roles, you know, we've got um, Jada Pickett-Smith, yep. you've got Christina Applegate, and you've got Annie, uh, I'm going to butcher the saying of this, Momolo, she um, actually co-wrote uh, Bridesmaids back in 2011, and she won, was nominated for an Academy Award for that one. So you've got a massively talented cast, hilarious, hilarious women, some of the funniest people in Hollywood there. Yeah, that's right. And a little uh, cameo for JJ Watt for the American yeah, for football fans. All the Houston Texans fans <laughs> out there, we know you're going to be watching. Um, playing the soccer coach. That one was really fun to watch yeah. just as a sports fan altogether. That was nice. I say we go punch that chick right in the tits. Great. I'm in. All right, so that's what's been happening on the big screen this week. Now on the smaller side of things, um, Jim, what have you been watching in, the, in regards to TV lately? Um, well, I've just finished Stranger Things on sure. Netflix, which uh, I really enjoyed. Yeah. Now, I haven't heard a lot about, obviously, Stranger Things, but I mean, everyone at home probably has heard something, at least rave reviews about it. Tell me a little bit about it. All right, well, I think the word that most people are using to describe it is nostalgia. It's a really kind of nostalgic TV series. They've, okay. of, they've embraced um, the kind of big films of the 80s with Spielberg doing things like E.T. and Close okay. Encounters and The X-Files and they've kind of made something very much in the spirit of those things. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So, yeah, it's, it's, and it's set in the 80s. Yeah. Um, yeah, supernatural themes. It's, it's, yeah, it's enjoyable. It cause it's, it's nothing new. It's nothing groundbreaking. The mm-hmm. way that they've done it is kind of, but, but well, the way that they've done it, they've kind of, they've embraced um, the kind of, the legacy that they're kind of building on. Okay. They, they haven't tried to make something new, they've just tried to make something that kind of pays. They haven't tried to make something brand new and, you know, earth shattering. They're just trying to do something that's been done before, but doing it well. Yeah. Is that and, fair and to say? Do, and doing it again, because the 80s is, is 30 years ago now. Sure. So, so. <laughs> I remember the 80s. <laughs> So, yeah, they're, they're just trying to kind of not nod to that, pay, pay homage to that. And yeah, then, sure. And then do something new. So, I mean, there's, there's things straight out of E.T., you know, there's, there's scenes that you, you, you could cut the frame and you could compare it to E.T. and it would be the same thing. So, yeah, they, they've deliberately embraced that and, and now I found it really enjoyable, yeah. And Winona Ryder is fantastic in it too. There's someone people might not have seen for a while on, sure, yeah. on the screen, yeah. Definitely be, um, I guess a lot of those straight to Netflix series are sort of getting a lot of attention over the last couple of years with Netflix getting you know, massive notoriety for those sort of streaming services. Yeah, absolutely. All right, so what have you been watching, Nick? Okay, well, something I've been watching a lot lately is Arrow. And it's not a new show. It's been around since you know, uh, late 2011, I want to say. But it's a TV ad- adaptation, sort of an origin story of the DC superhero, The Green Arrow. And it's sort of how he got his start in terms of uh, the comic book universe. And it's got a lot of um, throwbacks to how characters get their starts. And it's kind of fun being a fan of comic books, seeing you know, um, small bit characters sort of pop up along the way. You, you, know, you hear about their secret identities and you learn later on the track who they are. And it's just a good way of taking it um, and so sort of experiencing the comic books once again. It's, it's highly addictive, I want to say. Definitely very addictive. I found myself binge watching the last three seasons over a space of maybe a month and a half. Yeah. And it's got everything for someone at the very least. So like, it's not co- like, you know, filled with comedy. Obviously, it's sort of a darker drama type thing. That's what sort of DC goes for and compared to your, you know, your Marvel comic universe and whatnot. How I'd probably put it and pin it to the audience, it's sort of like, if you can imagine all the drama of a daytime soap opera and you combine that with, say, uh, you know, the action of those big budget, you know, action movies. And again, like those Marvel things. So you have quite a lot of big action sequences and, you know, pretty decent cast as well. Yeah, all right, sounds good. Um, Well, that's all we've got time for today. Thanks very much for watching. And we'll see you next week.